promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I was alone and I know I was a sinner too. I heard a voice from heaven say there is work to do. And I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. On the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I lost my flag in the battle, my staff is in my hand. I'm taking it to Jesus over in the glory land. In this land I trod, Christ said, come to God. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I'm fighting for my Savior, the battle is most won. The trumpet will be sounding, the coming of the sun. And I'll lay my armor down, take up my robe and crown. Then I'll walk the golden streets with my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. And I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. But I was alone and idle, I was a sinner too. And I heard a voice from Jesus say, there is work you do. And I took my master's hand and I joined that heavenly band. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Well, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I promised him that I, I would serve him till I die. I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I once said, I once heard it said that this is a battlefield, not a recreation room. And are you on the battlefield for your Lord? Have you made it right and are you ready? I want to welcome you to Okoy Church of God. It is good to see each and every one of you. What a beautiful crowd we have tonight. We want to welcome you guys that are watching us by the internet. So nice to have you guys. And let's go ahead and open in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you and we praise you, Lord. We just worship you tonight. We say this is your service. And we ask you to come and be in our midst and just be with us tonight. Lead us and guide us and just give us a time of refreshing and just move in this place, Lord. Let us feel your presence like we haven't never felt it before, Lord. As you just come and sit down with us tonight and just, just love on us tonight and let us love you back tonight because that's what it's all about is loving you, Lord. And Lord, we just give this to you and say you have your way and move. 
And Lord, we are excited to see what you're going to do in the midst tonight, Lord. And we just want to thank you and praise you for it's in your name we pray. Amen. Let's continue in worship. Jesus is King of Kings. Amen. That is the commission. Amen. That Jesus left for us. Hallelujah. Let's go way back. Way back in God. Let's go way back. Way back in God. Let's go way back. Let us shine 
holy praise hallelujah only he can satisfy amen that longing in our souls hallelujah Trust in Hallelujah. you, Lord. Hallelujah. I will trust in you, my God. There is a fountain. Who is a king? Victorious warrior and Lord of everything. My rock, my shelter.
tonight hallelujah for that tonight in your house Lord we love you 
Thank you tonight, Jesus, for being that rock that we need. Thank you, Lord, for being that shelter, Lord. Thank you for being that strong tower that we can run to and be safe in your name. Thank you for being that fountain, Lord, that flows in our life. Thank you, Lord, for being our everything tonight. Help us in this place, I pray, Holy Ghost of heaven. Have your way in our midst tonight. Lord, I pray you'll save and sanctify. Lord, fill with your Holy Ghost and fire tonight. Thank you, Lord, for being, Lord, my everything tonight. Help us in this place, I pray. We'll forever give you praise for it. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask the choir to come on up at this time. Singing out that red back book tonight. Songs that you'll know. Let's come and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. I'm glad he is the one who can satisfy us tonight. Amen. Amen. Take that red back book out of that pew in front of you. Turn to page number 212. 212 simply says keep on the firing line. Amen. I'm glad tonight that I can stay on the firing line with Jesus. Amen. 212 tonight. Yeah. 
uh, and keep on the firing line with Jesus tonight. Amen. Amen. Sing one more this, this evening with them. Page number 110. 110 simply says, Heaven's Jubilee. I'm looking forward to being in heaven. Amen. 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 Let's sing it together tonight.
I'm looking forward to that day going to see Jesus. Amen. Face to face as my Lord and as my Savior. Let me join with those that have already welcomed you tonight to say uh, along with them, I welcome you to Okoe Church of God. And I know that my Jesus is alive and well tonight. Amen. Amen. What a great time we had in the house of the Lord this morning. And uh, just expecting God to continue to touch us in this place tonight. I do want to remind you that after service tonight, uh, several of us will be gathering over at Arby's and Okoe for a time of fellowship. Ask that you meet us there. It is Dutch. Amen. Unless you want to pay for mine, I'll let you pay for mine. Um, but uh, it is Dutch. It's a way for us to uh, fellowship together but not have to clean up afterwards. Amen. Just dump the trash and leave and let somebody else take care of the lights and the bathrooms and all that. Now, we need to do our part, make sure we tidy up our area, um, but leave all the cleanup, the heavy cleanup to those folks tonight, and uh, we will do that after service. And then this week, they did a good job this morning mentioning all the announcements of this week. Don't forget about them tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, about 24 and a half hours from now. Uh, we will gather together for an important call conference. I pray that you'll be here. And uh, if you attend this church, if this is where you worship in at any time during the week, uh, I give you a personal invitation. You've already received that from me in the mail this week. Uh, but I verbally give you a personal invitation to meet us here tomorrow night as we do conduct business for the kingdom. Tuesday night's praise and prayer, Wednesday night's church. Uh, Thursday night spirit life Friday Friday morning is men's breakfast and then pray for us as we travel Friday we'll be taking a group of students to Fort Pierce for competition Friday and Saturday and then uh, fr Saturday afternoon is your Valentine's banquet uh, we should be back just in time to pop in and Valentine's with you for Saturday afternoon uh, sister Leslie is in the building she has the tickets if you know that you're going to be going or coming uh, to the banquet on Friday on Saturday uh, go ahead and purchase your ticket tonight just to help them get ahead of the, the food count and the setup need. And so uh, just see that $10 for adults and uh, $5 for children 11 and under. That gives you your food. Uh, that gives you entry for pictures. And uh, that gives you opportunity to win uh, door prizes. And so we usually have, I don't know, 10 or 15 or 20 door prizes. And some of them people really go all out for to try to win. And so uh, be here with us. I don't know. Uh, I don't know where you can get food of that quality and the fellowship of that quality and that many chances, ten chances to win a door prize uh, for ten bucks. Amen. So uh, be with us on Saturday afternoon at five o'clock, and then next Sunday will be church all over again. I do want to draw your attention to the end of the month, February the twenty-fourth. It's in your bulletin, been on your calendar. Uh, we will begin a week-long revival with Brother Carl Thomas, Bishop Thomas. Uh, he preached for us a couple services earlier and uh, the month of January, and we had a fantastic time with him and the Lord. And I'm looking forward to him being with us in the house of the Lord uh, that week, beginning on February the 24th. Amen. God is good. Amen. Amen. I'm going to just testify on behalf of Spirit Life and say what a great time they've had in the Lord today. And they had a guest speaker that were there today. I was able to take care of him. And and I uh, had a great, a great event last night, the Valentine's Banquet. I wasn't able to go, but I sent my representative. Amen. She looks a whole lot better than I do and sent her over there to uh, connect the two churches together. And uh, we're just so excited about what God is doing. March the 16th is a big day for them. It is family day. They're going to have hot dogs and all the fixings. Uh, there's going to be a bounce house, or I think two of them there, actually, and uh, some door prizes. And so we're going to uh, need you to help us. We want you to help us, but first of all, by praying and that God will give us favor. Secondly, we'd like for you to show up that day and uh, help us uh, celebrate what God's doing over there. And thirdly, uh, we're getting ready in the coming weeks to send out 528 flyers uh, to that local area. You say, is there that many people in the Ferndale community? No, there's not. Amen. There's 250 residents in the Ferndale community, uh, but that postal route has 528 residents on it. And uh, through a cooperation with the Postal Service, we looks like we're going to be able to hit every single mailbox for pennies on the dollar and invite them to that event to get out the, uh, the uh, information about spirit life. And so you be praying that God will give them favor and uh, God will help us in that endeavor. And we're just excited about what God is doing financially, spiritually, and numerically over at Spirit Life. And I do want to take time to, to say that tonight. Good to have Brother Terry home with us. He's been away for about four months and uh, slid in for church uh, uh, this morning. And actually slid in Wednesday late and then church all day today. And uh, so uh, so glad to have him home. And uh, I was able to lighten the load in my office a few pounds. And uh, he uh, his mail comes to a P.O. box in Okoe. 
And every once in a while, if I remember, I will take the key and go check it and stack it up in my office. And I'm glad I do because if not, the postal office would not be happy with him. And uh, so we dump it in a box in my office until he gets back in town. And he's in the house tonight. Good to have him. Good to see all the home folks. Good to see Sister Margaret Calvert with us tonight. No stranger to Ocoee. And good to have her with us tonight. And glad to know Jesus is on the throne. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask the ushers tonight if they'll come wait upon you. Give you an opportunity to worship with your tithes and with your offerings. Thank you for your faithfulness to the kingdom of God, to the call of the ministry. And uh, we do what we do every week because people like you are faithful. And uh, God will always have a faithful people. Amen. And uh, if we choose not to be, he'll find somebody else that is. I want to do my part, and I want to be faithful to his call and to his service tonight. And ask that you give as giving unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the opportunity we have to worship in truth and in spirit. Father, I pray as we come to this part of the service that you'll touch the offering, touch the tithes tonight. Lord, those that are given special designated funds, Lord, multiply them to meet the needs, Lord, that they're going toward. I pray that you'll bless the general offering. Let it meet the needs and expenses of the church. Thank you, Lord, that you're always an on-time God. You make a way for us. And, Lord, I'm so thankful that this church belongs to you, not to us. It's been bought by the blood of your Son. And for that tonight, we rejoice. Help us now. Return it to the giver many times over, and we'll forever be thankful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the church said amen and amen. God bless you as you give tonight. I hope you've had a great day in the Lord. I sure have had it today. Let's just continue to worship as the Walcotts come and, and minister to us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord another time. Oh, my, my. We are so dead. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you're happy to be in the house of God one more time, let's worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Huh. We're weak. Amen. You know, sometimes we forgot where God has brought us from, and we have to ask God to take us back. I have a little cold, so I don't know if I can manage it, but I'm going to try. Take me back. Take me back there, Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back.
Take me back, Father, take me back there, Lord, where I first believed you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, Father, take me back there, Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, Father, take me back there, Lord, where I first believed you. That I'm so far from you, Lord, but still I hear you calling me. Those simple things that I, I once knew, their memories keep drawing me. I must confess, Lord, I've been blessed, but yet my soul's not satisfied. Oh, Lord, take me back, take me back, take me back there, Lord, to the place where I first received you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, Father, take me back there, Lord, to a place where I first received you. That I'm so far from you, Lord. But still I hear you calling me. Those simple things that I once knew, their memories keep draw, drawing me. I must confess, Lord, I've been blessed. My soul not satisfied. Renew my faith, restore my joy. Weeping on, oh Lord, take me back, take me back, Father, take me back, dear Lord, to a place where I first receive you. Take me back, take me back, take me back, Father, take me back, dear Lord, to a place where I first received you. I am thankful for what Jesus has done for me. Amen. Amen. Sister Leslie, will you join me on the platform tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, musicians. I came by way of Sister Leslie or at the close of service this morning. She was in the sanctuary. And I reached over to her and I asked her to be ready to preach tonight. And she said, um, 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 are you serious? And I went, yes, I was serious. And then I told her, no, I would be scheduled to preach tonight. But uh, I do feel led to uh, have you testify. And uh, God's done some great things this week in her life and it's blessed me. And I, I don't want her to uh, miss a blessing from giving praise to Jesus. Amen. And so cheer it with us. God is so amazing. Um, Monday night last week, well, uh, my weeks are running together because I've been no sleep for two nights. But anyway, um, Monday I woke up in excruciating, excruciating is really not the word for it, back pain. I was couldn't walk hardly, couldn't stand, couldn't sit, couldn't lay. It hurt. However, whatever I did, went to work, made it half a day, went home, laid down, and prayed that I didn't have to get up for any reason because it hurt. And three days went that by in that much pain. And Wednesday night came to church because it hurt no matter what I did. So I might as well come to church because it hurt. So um, made it through the service, and pastor preached an amazing message um, Wednesday night. If you missed it, um, look it up on, on the Internet because it was amazing. But faith and fire he preached about. And 
he prayed for me, and I think Tim prayed for me Wednesday night, and I still went home in excruciating pain. But my faith was challenged later that night when I was laying down there in the bed. I said, God, I remember what Pastor preached. He talked about fire and faith. He talked about fire must fall and will fall. And then he talked about if, if I ask, I shall receive. In Jesus' name. So I said, God, I'm going to hold you to your word. You told me you'd heal me. You told me you'd be there for me. You told me that you won't let me down. I woke up Thursday morning, and I can bend, and I can run. And I was th so thankful because we had Kid Jam. But then I doubted a little bit because, you know, we all do. Uh, I, I'm not the only one, I think. So I said, oh, well, Kid Jam's just going to wear me out. And if I ever have an event like that where I'm on my feet, my back hurts anyway. And I get home and I, I can't move. No pain. After 24 hours of, we were on the big, the big stage in the back, if you've ever been to my mom, and the stairs are like this high that you have to get up. No pain, no stiffness. God is so amazing, so. Amen. I'm glad I didn't have to preach. Amen. She wanted to say no this morning, write out no to Pastor. Uh, but then something tugged on her and reminded her she is a candidate. And saying no was not an option. So you should have seen her try to stumble over words that mean no without saying no. Uh, but I did uh, already previously uh, plan in my mind that she would testify tonight. And uh, I do appreciate that. That encouraged me and to see God moving. If you've never been on a big yellow bus with uh, 20 folks headed to Waimama, the bus ride alone was enough to give you a back eight. And then sleeping on hard dorm room beds. Now, they're better than what they used to be, uh, but it's still Waimama, and it is still dorm rooms, and that'll be enough to give you a back eight. And then if not, riding home on the bus will give you a back eight. So, uh, and sleep, I think, was far removed from that place that night. And so I'm so thankful that God's able to touch us, amen, right when we need it. Brother Rob's not here tonight. He's uh, called away doing a Good Samaritan event uh, for, uh, for somebody close to him. Um, but uh, he said that why mama had the air conditioner a blowing this coming uh, this past weekend. And uh, they said it was 54 outside, and that was chilly. And they had the air conditioner on in the boys' dorms, and they had it set on zero, he believes. It was warmer outside than it was in the dorms' room. And I chuckled because I remember the years, the dorms, rooms, uh, you had air conditioner, but it didn't work. It just blew hot air. So um, be careful what you pray for. You just might get it. And uh, I know the kids had a good time in Waimama this weekend. And uh, thank you for allowing them to go with us or with them. And I got to drive them there and back on Friday and Saturday, and it was a blessing. Amen. You look good tonight, church. Look at your neighbor. Tell me they look good in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah great day in the Lord it has been and I'm just so thankful for what God is doing in our church and around our church and in the hearts and lives of our families and uh, let me encourage you this week to seek the face of the Lord and to be with us in all the events to be with us in service come out uh, Saturday night for a Valentine's banquet and uh, somebody has said earlier do you have to be married no you don't do you have to have a date no you don't uh, you can show up solo amen now I won't be showing up solo I quit that 15 years ago and um, so I'll be bringing my better half, but if you don't have a better half, uh, you just come as you are, and uh, we'll make sure you leave at least full. Amen? And um, somebody asked, uh, Titus has a significant other he thinks he's going to bring to the Valentine's banquet. And uh, Mariah has informed me that she has a significant other that's asked her to the Valentine's banquet. And uh, Chera said, I'm going just by myself. <laughs> I think she's the smart one of the group. Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. So anybody that is interested, she's off limits until she's 28, and uh, then maybe uh, by the time she's 30, we'll talk about marriage. Amen? Amen. Let me remind our parents that if you are interested in your student going to SEYC, uh, you need to get your deposit money in fast. We may be at capacity with girls. Um, there may be one or two more spots open, and I think we have one spot open for, boy, for a boy. Um, so if you're interested and have not done that, I would advise you to move on that quickly as early as tonight to make sure that you have spots uh, for your kids. And um, all the students are aware of this, but all applications or all deposits 
um, or all participants are subject to pastor's final approval. And we do that to protect you and the youth group and your pastor and the church. And we want to make sure that uh, the right students are going. And I don't want to hold any back, anybody back from going. Um, but I do want to make sure that we have students that are mature enough to go and be away with, for three days and two nights and uh, travel that far and represent Christ, first of all, but represent our church. So any questions on that, see Rebecca, and I'm sure she'll be able to answer uh, all of your questions. If not, she'll find you an answer. Stand with me for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to ask them if they'll tweak me a little bit up here, maybe number one and two, a little bit of a ring. And uh, we were blessed with brand new uh, amplifiers for our sound system on Tuesday. And um, we're having to still tweak, so you be just praying for us. You keep upgrading, Pastor. There will be nothing else to upgrade. We'll praise the Lord. Amen. It's the Lord's house. It needs to be the very best it can be. And so uh, when you put new stuff in, you have to tweak and tweak and tweak. And uh, they're working on that. So that does sound better, and I do appreciate you doing that tonight. Ephesians chapter number 4. Amen. I'm well aware of the time. I won't preach in more than an hour. Amen. So you stay with me. Till we all come in unity of the faith and of knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and by the cunning of craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive but that we will do the following, verse 15, but speaking the truth in love, that we may grow up into him in all things, which is even the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body into the edifying of itself in love. Tonight I'm going to pick up where I left off this morning on this subject matter of spiritual maturity. Father, I thank you today for your presence. Lord, you've been with me all day, and I'm thankful for that. I got up with you this morning. Lord, I ate, uh, came to church and ate breakfast with a pastor's group this morning, and Lord, participated in worship, went home and had lunch, and you were still with me. Lord, I, I was in the office this afternoon conducting business for you, and you were there with us then, and Lord, you've been with us in this service tonight, and I'm thankful for that, but I do pray as we open up your book now that you'll anoint me. Lord, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Let my thoughts and my words and my actions be formed first in heaven. Lord, that they'll be pleasing unto you. Challenge us as a congregation. Allow us, Lord, to be led by your spirit allow us God to be a church that is mature in our spiritual walk with you Lord that we can be an impact to this community and will forever give you praise and honor and glory for it in the name of Jesus we pray and the church said amen, amen. and amen you may be seated in his presence uh, this evening I am not going to recap much from this morning just reminding you that we are in Ephesians 4 again speaking of spiritual maturity I do want to remind you that it is God's desire that we be mature people. Can you say amen? And that it is also God's desire that we live life to the fullest in Him and that we do all that Christ has called us to do. And we went into the second point this morning, speaking of what is that spiritual maturity, uh, looking at Scripture, looking at reference for what God has called us to do, realizing that He is the standard, realizing that He is the one that we should judge ourselves against. Amen. I should not look at my life and say, I'm better than brother so-and-so or my family's better than that family. No, my friend, I don't judge myself compared to what you are doing are not doing but I look at this book and say God where do I wait where do I rate compared to it and I realize that I must follow after Christ and we finished our time this morning together realizing that most Christians want to reign with him but few of us are willing to suffer with him and we realize that many want the crown of glory but they want to avoid the crown of thorns and there are those that want the robes of righteousness but yet they will not be willing to wear the scarlet robe of mockery so we talked about and preached about this Christian maturity this morning I want to pick up with point number three this afternoon or this evening that it is also really important to us as I close this morning there are some desires or, or some characteristics of a child that we want to keep and those characteristics are gentleness and, and, and that innocency but there are some characteristics of a child that if we grow to be mature Christians in Christ that we will need to get rid of the first one tonight is a child must be milk fed can you see Amen. Oh, that was weak. A child must be milk fed. Christians 
Christians who take pleasure in messages presenting by a personality that has come only to please them with, with, with the words and with the points and with the poems and with the stories are, are, are not able to follow a, a, a deep study of the word because they are yet in a milk fed childish state now I realize that's what a lot of the world is today it is entertainment. It is, it, is, it is an opportunity for us to come together in what we call a spiritual setting and we uh, ask the presence of God to be with us. But what happens on the platform is no more than an entertaining event. And I say, God, if I'm going to be the Christian, the mature Christian that you've called me to be, then I must get off the milk and I must get on the meat. I must push away those things uh, that are childlike in my life uh, that prevents me from being what God has called me to be. Uh, those who cannot receive the meat of the word uh, cannot expect to come to the full measure and the full, full level of the stature that Christ has called for you to have uh, as you seek after his fullness. Uh, if you do not decide to get off of the milk of the word and to put some meat into your spiritual diet, you will not be able to grow into the fullness that Christ has called you to live in. Now stay with me. Let me read to you Hebrews 5 and 12. For, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again in the first principle of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Can I tell you, we live in a world today that's got a lot of evil, and we as Christian folks, spirit-filled folks, need to ask God to help us discern what is good and what is evil. And I say, God, the way I'm going to do that is to take in more and more of your word to get all the milk of your word and get on the meat of your word and allow your spirit to draw me into the fullness into the stature that you would have me to be so we need to be children that are no longer on the milk but are on the meat a child also tonight is a child that must be amused but as a spiritual mature Christian this is a characteristic that we need not to have as evident in our life. A child must be amused, and that is the case with so many church attenders and members and laity in our church world today. They are attracted to the church by carnal methods and carnal gimmicks and gadgets. There must be a movie. There must be a social. There must be a ball game. There must be a party to attract them to church. Can I tell you, whatever you attract people to church, with it'll take that same attraction to keep them in church and what happens when all the movies are gone and what happens when all the ball games are over with amen what happens in the middle of the night when the enemy's tormenting you and you can't sleep? A, a, a ball game ain't going to help you. A social party is not going to help you. A movie is not going to help you. But having some spiritual maturity in your life and some meat in your soul will help you fight the evil ways of the enemy. It must be, must be a move to maturity. The gimmicks of today is a far cry from the New Testament's church's idea of Christianity. Their symbol was not movies and programs and methods and social gatherings like this coming Saturday night. We have them. That was not their emphasis. Their emphasis was the cross. Their emphasis was Calvary. Their emphasis was Jesus. And I said, God, I love all of the other stuff that we put together with church. But it cannot be what draws people. There must be a move of the Spirit of God in His house. That when people, are, when people come into this setting, they feel the Spirit of God tugging on their heart. And they must do something about it. And when the Spirit draws them, can I tell you, the Spirit can keep them. No matter what the program is. No matter what the music 
sounds like. No matter who's behind the pulpit. No matter what clubs are going on. Because there's some maturity that can happen in that individual. If they'll just get off the milk and get on the meat. First Corinthians says. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Can you say amen? When I become a, a, a mature Christian in Christ, it's time that we put away the childish things. It's time we put away the things that make no difference in our life. And we think and become as a mature person in Jesus Christ child also not only is milk fed and is amused and we get a lot of folks amusing people today we got a lot of folks that are help me got a lot of folks that are bringing them in with gimmicks and lights and smoke and music and gifts and and I, i'm not saying that none all that's bad i'm saying be very careful because i i have seen it time and time again Whatever you amuse somebody with in church, you're going to have to keep... I've already said it, but let me just say it again. You're going to have to keep doing it or they're going to find somebody somewhere else to go and be amused at. But I said, God, I don't want to be amused. I want to realize when I come into your house, it is about Jesus and Him crucified. Now, I believe it should be the very best, the very best music, the very best programs, the very best you can offer. But if it's just me, myself, and I, and Jesus, I still believe I can come to his house and leave changed because he is God. Amen? A child also deals in petty things. In our scripture text, we realize that looking at some of that with the Ephesians and also the Corinthians, there was strife and division among the Corinthians. They, they were sermon tasters, if you will, who followed their favorite preacher. It's okay if I'm not your favorite preacher. It's okay if you've got a list of them much, much, much greater than I ever will be. But I will tell you this. When we come to the Lord's house, whatever is behind the pulpit, if they open up the blessed book and read from it, it should be enough to stir up what's inside of us. It should be enough to say, Lord, I don't need to deal with the petty things. I need to follow after Jesus. And whatever is behind the pulpit, if they represent Jesus and they do it with the right attitude and the right heart, Lord, let me get off of this social club, but let me find a church that loves Jesus, preaches Him crucified, still believes in sanctification and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and has a desire to see people saved and set free and called to live a life of holiness. Amen. Hallelujah. Their religious experiences were being pinned to personalities. Their faith stood in the wisdom of man. Oh, we've seen that in our own time. Their faith stood in the wisdom of man rather than, of, than in the power of God in the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. You must realize that strife and division are works of the flesh and no spirit-controlled life can tolerate strife and division. What do you mean, Pastor? There are some things that just absolutely don't matter in my walk with Christ. When it comes to church, as far as the facility, what do you mean, Pastor? I don't care if we sing off the wall or out the book, it's petty to me. But do you know that has caused church issues beyond control? Because somebody said, Well, bless God, that's not the way God. Do you think they sung out the red back hymnal in the New Testament? No, it didn't exist. It's petty. I remember, and I've told this story before, and I love the red back book, I grew up on it. There's probably a few of them in the Stark Church. The old Stark Church may have a few teeth marks on them. I'm sure I got a hold of a page or two growing up in that setting. But I remember, even as a young lad, I, it, it, when, when we went from books to transparencies, oh, Lord, oh, Jesus. I remember them coming to Mom and Dad and saying, Brother and Sister Odom, we are considering going to transparencies in the church. And uh, what do you think about it? Now, my mom and dad were just lay folks, not in ministry. My dad was a superintendent, I think, or an assistant at that time. And 
Mom just sang in a choir and, and did whatever she could. Not, not ministers at all, just, just lay folks. Mom said, if that's what you want to do, do it. We'll sing off the wall with you. And we did. We sung off the wall for, for several years. And then we got sophisticated and went from transparency to projectors. I'm saying all that to say there's some things that don't matter. Churches are, are fighting over colors of carpet. We've been through that. Thank God, to my knowledge, we didn't lose one person over the color of carpet. Amen? Why? Because it's petty. When, it, when you put it all in a stack of things, it's petty. Children fight over petty things. Spiritual people keep God first. Amen? Oh, they, 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 they split over church pews versus chairs. They split over how fast or how hot or how cold. I don't mean to meddle, but there's some things that just don't matter when it comes to my spiritual walk with Jesus Christ. Not only is a child going to be one that deals in petty things, a child is one that must be served versus a spiritual Christian who is supposed to be doing the serving. Stay with me. A child must be served, but that child seldom serves others. That child has to be under constant surveillance. That child has to be one that is constantly cared for. He cannot care for others, but instead depends on somebody else to care for him. Those are the characteristics of children, and we see them in Christians who have not reached maturity level spiritually. What do you mean, Pastor? Old preacher didn't call me this week. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you'll call me and tell me I didn't call you, I will hang up and call you. I am here to serve. And I try my best, and I'm not perfect. And nobody's fussed that I know of that I haven't called them. I'm using that as an example. We are not here to, as spiritual people to be served. But we are here as spiritual mature people to serve somebody else. Can you say amen? It's not about what's in it for me. It's not about what, what do I get out of this. It's how can I get up every day and help somebody find their way to Calvary. How can I get up every day and grow to be the stature of the Christian godly man that he's called me to be. And how can I help somebody, somebody change their path from hell to heaven. Many, many Christians, many Christians are immature when it comes to their spirituality. The characteristics of the children we see on the screen are those that we see in our church. But mature Christians are Christians who are addicted to caring for the saints. A simple phone call, a simple prayer. A simple, I've been thinking about you this week. A simple, I hear you're in need. What can I do for you? A, a simple, I understand you're under a load. Is there anything, is there anything that I or my family can, we're here to serve you. That's not just the pastor's job, amen? It's not just leadership's job. It's not just staff's job. No, when Jesus saved my soul from hell, he called me into a lifestyle of servanthood. Him being the great one that said, I will go and give myself away that they may have life. I say, God, let me be a no longer a child, but let me be one that has a desire to serve all of those that I can. They desire their spiritual Christians' desire is to please others and not themselves. Those spiritual mature Christians have a desire to submit themselves to love, to love one another. Amen. To love them no matter where they come from. To love them no matter what they're going through. Oh, the spiritual mature Christian is one that will bear one another's burdens. Amen. It'll get up under that load and say, I'm praying with you. I'm praying for you. A spiritual mature Christian is one that only, not only will bear the other, burdens, other one's burden, but will pray for them, and they will esteem others better than themselves. It's not about me. It must be about Jesus. 
But we live in a world today where we live in this I, I, I mentality. What's in it for me? Uh, what do I get out of it? Uh, and I believe if we read the word of God as we have this morning and again tonight, we will find that Christ teaches us through his words uh, and through his work uh, that it's not about us. It's about getting off the milk uh, where we can be self-sustaining through his spirit uh, and help somebody else find Jesus. I don't need the preacher to call me every week. Hallelujah. I did that where I wouldn't look at you. Some of the best times I have is when I find myself talking to a senior saint, a prime timer, an aged Christian. Sometimes I'll even be with folks and maybe my day has been crazy and maybe I've been just overloaded and bombarded with things of life and I'll spend a few moments on the phone with them to encourage them and oftentimes they end up encouraging me why because a lot of them figured out it ain't about what's in it for us it's about giving God praise and serving and even in their even in their senior uh, senior side of life uh, they've got that concept and they've matured spiritually and pastor thank you for calling but it's not really about me pastor oh I'm praying for you and I'm praying for the church and I haven't been there I've been sick but I'm praying for for the ministry I'm, I want to do all what are they saying they're saying I'm not a child spiritually physically I may not be well physically I may not be able to be there but spiritually I am mature and I've given it all to Christ and I want to serve any way that I can serve and I say God give us some more spiritual mature folks on the pews in our churches not only in Okoe but around this country that we can serve others for the cause of Christ number four tonight metaphors metaphors of maturity the apostle approached the question of maturity negatively when he said this in Ephesians 4 and 14, he said that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. Now, if you were doing a public speaking class, they probably would tell us that if you're going to address a point, address it positively, not negatively. But the apostle in this scripture addresses this maturity negatively by saying you need to stop being like children. Be no more like that, ones that are tossed to and fro. The, the metaphor that is used here refers to a child's tendency to be changeable or a child's tendency to be easily influenced or led astray. I said, oh God. We got folks that should be a lot deeper in their walk with Christ than they are today. And I know that because they're being led away by the winds of, of doctrine and the winds of times uh, that are coming their way. Uh, they're easily influenced. Uh, it, it takes almost nothing for them to miss church. Uh, it takes almost nothing for them to not pay tithes. Uh, it takes almost nothing for them uh, uh, to give up on God uh, and say, I just can't do it anymore. I said, oh God, uh, don't let me be childlike in my attitude uh, or childlike in my faith let me be one that sets the attention toward Jesus and not the attention toward me Paul used the metaphor of ships being tossed to and fro to picture for us the instability of the character a vessel a boat or a ship if you will drifting at the mercy of the raging waves think about that a vessel a ship that is drifting at the mercy of the raging waves. No course has been charted. No line has been drawn for sailing. There has been no helm. They are being tossed. They are being carried about. There, there's no way they're going to know where they're going to end up. And I say, God, that's like some Christians today. Oh, yes, they've come and asked God to forgive them. And they got their spiritual bottle that day. And they've never went back. They've never let God refill that or help them increase to a Pop-Tart or to a piece of meat or anything else. And no wonder they're tossed to and fro. No wonder they're up one week and out the next. No wonder they're mad with the world one day uh, and loving Jesus and everybody else the next day because we're being tossed a small ship in this kind of setting will be tossed and driven while large ships or mature ships will be able to pass 
by unharmed and unshaken in the raging waves. Now think about that. The wave that will steer a small vessel off course is little compared to the wave that it will take to shift a large vessel off course. Are you sure, Pastor? Oh, I'm sure. You take a three-year-old kid and put him at the edge of the, of the ocean, and a mature adult like myself, or maybe one of you, the wave that pushes me back will have to be much larger than the wave that pushes back a three- or four-year-old student. Same thing it is in our spiritual life. The winds of change and time and doctrine and the things that we deal with. Uh, if we only remain small vessels, uh, if we only remain immature, if we only remain babes, uh, we will be tossed to and fro. And I say, God, uh, we must realize that the word is our compass. Uh, we must realize that faith is our pallet, uh, a pilot. And we must realize that hope uh, is our anchor. And the way I'm going to become from a small vessel to a large vessel is to get off the milk and get on the meat of the word of God a mature Christian is not going to be moved by the shifting winds of false teaching and they are everywhere in the day that we live there was once a ship maybe you've heard of this that set out on, to sail on a journey it was called a cruise to nowhere that concept of cruise to nowhere is the state of those who are being tossed to and fro by the winds of doctrine. They are on a cruise to nowhere. They flow from no certain point. False doctrine, false doctrines, like winds of change, are unsteady in their life. Those who are, who are readily... Those who are readily excitable and those who are dependent upon their surroundings and upon the influences of those are moved by every wind of teaching. Can I tell you that I do realize that we live in this world, but we should not be affected by the winds that are being blown in this society. Pastor, but it's difficult. I, I, I understand as a parent and as a husband and as a part of this society that it's, it's overwhelming and it's challenging if I look at it through carnal eyes. But I've read the book, my friend. I've read the back of the book. He will be an anchor that will hold. Amen. He will be an anchor that's large enough that if I'll grow into the man and the godly dad and godly father and godly husband that God's called us to be, then he'll have an anchor that's set down that shall not allow me to be moved and when the winds come and the rains fall and the doctrine changes I can stay established on the path that God has started me on but if not you're going to be one that is easily stirred in the wrong direction we could liken those people to Reuben in Genesis chapter number 49 like Reuben they are unstable as water you go home and you can read about that later Genesis 49 verses 3 and 4 they are moved by the slight of men in Ephesians 4 and 14 Paul used a metaphor of the trickery of gambling these men in Ephesians 4 deal with scriptures in a deceitful manner they, 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 they pray if you will and they twist the scriptures to their own destruction they corrupt the word of God and misuse scripture to fit, their, to, to, to fit their desire and to fit their belief. They handle the word of God deceitfully. And I say, God, I pray that I've stood in this pulpit for over four years as your pastor, that I've never, I've never come across this pulpit with something that wasn't backed up by the word of God. But can I tell you, there are those that do. There are those that do it week in and week out. And it seems to me that people are flocking to some of those venues. Why? Because they're looking for an answer. And this man or this woman has promised they have the answer. I have the answer. His name is Jesus. Amen. But it's time we grow from being on the milk to being on the meat it's time we go from being little vessels to mature vessels where Christ can use us and if I'm not careful me and my own family me and my own home will, will be deceived because of the deceit that is happening in the world today and I say God I've come too far to turn back now allow me to grow up and to be spiritual in what you've called me to do 
Number five tonight. There's also a, not just a metaphor, but there's a means. There's a way for you to become mature. The apostle left that negative vein, that negative vein of let us no more be tossed to and fro. And he said in a very positive manner in Ephesians 4 and 15 of our text, but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. What he is saying here in this verse is literally truthing in love or living by truth. We could also say that what the writer is sharing with us is that the way of truth and love leads us to spiritual maturity. Oh, if I want to be a spiritual mature person, uh, then I need to be full of love and I need to be full of truth. Can you say amen? I mean, if you're full of truth, you can't go wrong. If I hide that word in my heart, I won't sin against him. Hallelujah. And if I have the truth in my heart, if I've digested that, if I read it, if I allow the truth to become relevant in my life, then I'm going to be full of love. And that love will let you love anybody, no matter where they're at, no matter what they've done, no matter how many times they've used you or lied upon you or said things that are not right to those around you. I say, God, let me have some love and let me have some truth. That love demands maturity for that love. Love is full flowering. That is love that is tested. A love that is proven. A love that passes all knowledge. I mentioned that this morning. God fill us with your love. Love is associated with Christian development throughout the scriptures. And we must realize if we're going to be like Jesus, we're going to be full of love. How ironic Thursday is Valentine's Day. And I say, God, the world will spend Lots of money. I almost said billions. It may not be billions. I don't know. Lots of money on flowers. Amen. I don't know where the first lady is, but if I slide the schedule right this week, there'll be a dozen roses delivered just in time. Why? Because I'm going to do my part as a husband. Have them delivered and everything. But then come February the 15th, it all dies off. I say, God, that's not the kind of love I want to have in my life for Jesus. I want to have a love that on February the 14th, it's solid. Amen. And on February the 15th, if Jesus doesn't come, I roll out of bed that morning. The love that I have for Christ on the 15th of February is greater than it ever was on the 14th because I realize that that love is associated with Christian development throughout the entire Word of God. It is not suggested that love is the foundation, but it is suggested that love is the condition under which growth takes place. What do you mean, Pastor? you got to have the right conditions, that truth and that love in your life to scroll up and be spiritual mature. Listen to what it says. Love builds up the edifying, the building of itself in love. That's verse 16. Listen to what Jude says. Building, keep yourselves in the love of God. I would not be upset with as many folks in my life if I would just love them like Jesus loves them. Thinking of that time where Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's love, my friend. That's love. Because if it had been us, oh, I'll make it personal. If it had been me, that probably would not be the words that I'd want to say about that time. I'd want to call a meeting and have a council session and ha have an opportunity to tell them what I really think about the whole situation. That's the old man. Amen? The new man says, oh no, I'm going to love them through it all. I'm going to love them through it all. I'm going to love them through it all. It's the desire, the Apostle Paul, that we comprehend the dimension of love, the breadth, the length, the depth, and the height of that love. When he saw the unbounding, everlasting, all-encompassing love of God, he cried forth, to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge. Nothing will ever create an, appl an, 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 an application in our life that we will appreciate the devotion of Christ like the knowledge of His love. Let me remind you what happened. 
John 15 and 13 says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Romans 5 and 8, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, unlovable, can you say amen, Christ died for us. The height of his love reaches to the heavens. And I'm so thankful for that tonight. And the depth of his love reaches to the lowest hell. And I too am thankful for that love tonight. Oh, the breadth of his love is an expansion as the east is from the west. And the length of his love is from everlasting to everlasting. And I said, God, let me be full of truth. And let me be full of love. In addition to love, there must be truth in a, in a Christian to bring them to full maturity. The scriptures admonish us to abide in the truth and to walk in the truth and to do the truth for he is truth. And only when we have a well-balanced diet. Some of you started the new year off with a new resolution. You make it every year. I'm going to eat better this year. Some of you went as far as to say, I'm going to lose some weight this year. I'm going to do all of those things. And if you did, and you're doing it, I'm proud of you. If you've fallen off the bandwagon, you can get back on it. Amen? Physically, but spiritually, we have no room to fall off the bandwagon when it comes to our spiritual maturity. I want to eat the Word of God. I want to digest who He is. I want to have that balanced diet. I want to have love. And I want to have truth. And John 17, 17, as Christ would say, Thy Word is truth. And I say, God, so everything we've done, even this year of 2013, as we saturated the sanctuary with the scriptures, as we have in, embarked on a daily Bible reading program, as we have focused our time in prayer, I say, God, are you not reminding your people that it's about love and about truth? And if we'll hide the word of God in our heart, we will grow to become spiritually mature. So then I must ask you, Why then, why then are so many churches, I'll make it personal, why then are so many of us in this church possibly still much more childish in our spiritual walk than we'd like to be? Pastor, I, I want to be all that God's called me to be. I want to be all God's called me to be too. But wanting to be that and being that is two different things. Saying with our lips that I want to be like Jesus and being like Jesus is two different, two different concepts. I may want to be a baseball player. The truth is I never will be. I don't have that kind of coordination and long-suffering and ability. I would get just, just bored out there. I struggle going to watch my own kids play because it just doesn't move fast enough for me sometimes. I know that's very sickening. I'm a bad parent. Now, when my kid's up there, it's a, but as soon as they swing it, I mean, it's like, we got to wait now nine more times for this? It just doesn't move fast enough for me. But I set all that aside and say, God, last night and to this morning and tonight, God, how do you see me? Because I know what I think I am when it comes to my spiritual maturity, but God, how do you see me? Because truth be known, we usually think that we're much more spiritually mature than possibly we are. And if we allow God to talk to us, I believe He would challenge all of us tonight that it may be good that all of us eat a little more meat this week. Say, Pastor, I'm doing my very best, then bless you. Or some of us could do a better job this week. Some of us could dig a little deeper this week. Some of us could read a little bit more and pray a little bit more. Some of us could get off the milk a little bit more this week and get on a little more meat. Just start with a small bite and let God fill you with his presence. So I go back to my question, Sister Rachel, if you'll come. Go back to my question. Why are so many of us spiritually weak? Could it be that we've not allowed his truth and his love to fill our heart. 
the only, the only alternative to maturity. If you're not going to, I said this this morning. If you're not going to be mature in Christ, then you're going to be a child in Christ. And church, I don't want to be a child in Christ all my life. I want to be mature. I want to be able to, to see things as Christ sees them. I want to be able to be led by His Spirit. I want to be able to be okay when everything around me crashes down, knowing that I've read His Word and that I've trusted in His love and that when it seems I'm not going to make it, there's enough maturity about me that says, my God has never, ever failed me. Oh, I want to be mature enough that when the next wind of doctrine blows in, I don't question it to see if I'm right or wrong. I will look at it and say, that is not of the Lord. And I won't be swayed by what the world says. I do not know what 2013 will hold for Christians. I don't know that anybody really knows. I do not know what 2013 will hold for our denomination. I don't know what this year holds for this church or my family. One thing I said to God in prayer, just in the last hours, if you will, God, I'll do whatever you've called me to do. I'll go wherever you call me to go. And I'll do my best to be mature enough to follow your leading. Where do you stand tonight, church? Are you mature? Do you have a desire to be more mature in Christ? Every head bowed and every eye closed. No one moving, no one leaving for a season of time. Father, thank you for the stillness of your spirit tonight. Father, Lord, I, I love to run and jump and shout with the best of them. But God, sometimes that responsibility leads me to bring us to an altar of prayer where the spotlight from heaven can be shown upon our life where we can see ourselves as you see us. Father, and I, I believe tonight that you're talking to men and women alike, God, to students across this sanctuary, God, that we need to grow up and to be more mature, that we need to realize the God that we serve is God of it all, that it does not matter what men may say, it does not matter what the physicians or bankers or, or, or political folks may say, there is a God in heaven who has everything in control, and God, I want to be mature enough in my life that I do not allow the winds of change and the winds of doctrine, Lord, to blow me off course. But God, I want to have my mind made up. God, I want to have my foot on the rock. God, I want to be led by your power and by your spirit. Lord, that I will be a mature Christian for you. God, and I don't feel tonight that I'm alone. I believe there are others in this place that will say, God, I want to be mature for you tonight. And Father, I pray in just a few moments when we gather around the altars, God, that we'll strip these pews and we'll find ourselves calling upon your name, saying, Lord, help me. Help me to take in more of your word, more of truth, and more of love. And help me to get off the milk of this life and to get on the meat of your spirit. Help us tonight, I pray. We'll forever give you praise and honor and glory for it. In the name of Jesus, we do ask. Church, how many tonight would join me in this altar again? Say, Pastor, I prayed this morning. It's okay to pray two times on Sunday, amen? How many would say, Pastor, I want to meet you in this altar again tonight. And I want to grow to be mature spiritually. I want to grow and be what God has called me to be. If that's you tonight, would you strip those pews from where you're seated? Would you join me in this altar tonight? Let's spend a season in prayer. Let's call upon the Lord. Father, as they begin to move across this sanctuary floor tonight, God, I pray as we step out in faith, God, that it will be growth to our life and growth to our spirit. Father, I pray that this week, Lord, we'll get off the milk. Lord, we'll no longer be childlike. We'll no longer, Lord, uh, respond like children. But, Lord, we will grow to be mature. We will grow to be all that you've asked of us to do. Uh, help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, God, to be all that you've asked of us to be. Just a closer walk with thee. Pray. Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close.
to Thee, oh, let it be. Dear Lord, let it be. Oh, and just a closer walk with Thee. Red Jesus is my plea. Jesus is my 